Father, thank you for this day, and God, thank you for a beautiful day you've given us. God, I thank you for a Wednesday night Bible study, and Lord, I just pray uh, you be with us tonight, and God, I thank you for your word, and your word is right, it is yes, it is amen, and God, it's just so good to be able to uh, kind of go in the middle of the week and get a little booster, and uh, God, we just thank you for how you illuminate scripture, how you bring it to life, and God, I pray we would apply it to our lives. Uh, every time we read it. So God, just be with us here tonight. God, thank you for the children and the youth that are they're in the building also. And God, I pray you bless their time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 5 with me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to start reading in verse 12. I want to talk to you tonight about how to be a spirit-filled Christian. I truly believe Every Christian should be spirit-filled. And, you know, we sometimes, and, you know, I think of folks in the Bible, uh, I think of Peter, uh, he would stick out in my mind as far as, you know, at one time he was telling Jesus, hey man, I'd die for you. Uh, but yet, when it come to around the campfire and when he was accused of being a follower, he, he did, follower of Jesus, he denied him three times. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is we as Christians, me, you, all of us, are not always spirit-filled. So that's something, it's like being perfect. I understand we're not going to be perfect while we're here on earth. I understand that. And I thank God for the blood he shed, uh, you know, to forgive us of our sins. But even though we can't be perfect, I still believe we should strive for perfections as Christians. So I want to just walk down through this, and you can see all kinds of ways that if we would do these things, and here's what they are, folks. These are disciplines in our lives, okay? To be a spirit-filled Christian, you have to have discipline in your spiritual life. Uh, verse 12, and we urge you, brethren, and uh, I'm telling you, uh, Paul loved the word brethren. He called them, I think, in uh, his writings, 27 times uh, he addressed uh, his audience as brethren to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And folks, I, you know, I don't have any problem here. Everyone uh, here, uh, they recognize who we are. Uh, they, uh, you know, take great care of us. Uh, so I don't really believe this applies in our churches, but that's in our church, but that's not always true. And let me say this about our staff, folks. I'm telling you, I would put our staff against anybody. Not, not that we're competing, but I love every one of our staff. We all get along. We all are united in one accord. We all help one another when it needs to be helped. And, uh, and, and uh, here it's just simply saying uh, we need to respect, okay, and we need to take care of those uh, leadership in the church and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And folks, that's true in all positions or all jobs. People work better when they feel appreciated. And you are appreciated, and the way we can show appreciation is through love. All right, and I, I'm just telling you, uh, so many of the people that I talk to on the phone, I'll be checking on them or they're sick, and either I will initiate it, and if, a lot of times if I don't initiate it, they will say, preacher, I love you. And folks, positive words are just so important, all right? That is another way of encouraging a leadership in the faith. And it says, be at peace among yourselves. And three times in this scripture, it talks about peace. And where peace comes from is being a spirit-filled Christian. And so we need the peace of God in our lives. Now look at verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are, who are unruly. And again, warn doesn't mean judge, okay? That's not what it's talking about. It's simply saying if we see another Christian and it is something that seems blatant in their life, okay, 
And, and it works for Christians and non-Christians, okay? We, if we see somebody, we, we might say something like this. Hey, have you ever thought about what you just said? Or something that, I mean, in your mind, uh, it's, it's against the Word of God. And here's the deal. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter, tell the truth in love. And there's a huge difference in you judging somebody, your tone of voice, uh, you, have to, you, 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 know, you have to be gentle, but yet uh, firm if it's uh, the Word of God. And also, unruly, it's talking about lost people too. The one that gets me, and, and this will set me off faster than anything, is when somebody uh, that I know is lost uses God's name in vain. I cannot let that go. I just, I won't let it go. Now, I'll try not to embarrass somebody, you know, in a group of people, but it, they're just, that is one thing. Uh, to, to say God and then add words to that is just unacceptable, okay? So even in what we're saying, remember, we're talking about being spirit-filled. We have to do it in love, okay? So warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted. And folks, comfort, we know what that means. And faint-hearted means those who have uh, not necessarily given up, but those who that, 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 you know, maybe they are not as active uh, in church or, you know, used to, uh, you know, they, they, they seem to might have fallen away some, okay? And, and sometimes that's all they need, comfort, knowing uh, that you care, knowing that you miss, uh, you know, someone in church. And I tell you what's happened to me, and it don't happen very often, but every once in a while, I'll think of somebody on a Monday, I'll, I'll think of somebody and, and I'll think in my own mind, I didn't see you Sunday. Well, I call them on Monday and they say, well, preacher, I was here. But you know what one of them said to me? They said, I'd rather you call me even that you didn't than if I missed and you didn't call me. Okay, so while the issue is, obviously, there's many here on Sunday mornings, it's still good uh, to exhort those, uh, you know, people uh, who are faint-hearted. Folks, not everybody runs the race strong. Not everybody finishes the race as far as the Christian race. Some get tired, some drop out. And uh, us encouraging and comforting them, uh, it'd be really, really good. And here's the one. This is going to get us all. Be patient with all. Now, we know what all means. We're talking about from age, yeah, let, let's say, what do they call it? The terrible twos or the threes? Okay, okay, I've got them. Okay, I've got a mom over here agreeing with me. All right. We need to be patient with folks. All right, we really do. And it's not, I, I, I am talking all ages, all right? Because there's sometimes, there are senior adults that, you know, you know, might be fellowshipping or doing something, and they'll say something, and I think, did they really say that? Is that what they said? You know, and, and a lot of times, folks, and, and here it is with me, all right? I like to kid around a lot. So sometimes, I just, it, you know, it's on my mind, and I just kind of pop off and say something. And I really don't mean it, but, all right, we need to be patient with people like me or patient with those uh, doctor's offices. Let me help you here. All right, the, where, you, where, you, where you get your license, D, what is it, D.O. something? DMV. I, have you just never sat there for a while and listened to people? It is ridiculous some of the things that they say while they're sitting there, all right? And, and we are not, I've said this and I'll keep saying it till the day I die, of all the nine fruits of the Spirit, I believe this is the last one, and I'm not sure we've mastered it yet, okay? Some people are very patient, all right? But most Christians need to be more patient. Spirit-filled Christians are patient with all. Verse 15, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. What does that mean? Because here's what the world says. If someone talks about you, you can talk about them. If someone does you wrong, you can do them wrong. If someone hurts you, you can hurt them. 
Well, folks, I'm telling you, Jesus was real plain about that uh, in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, we should not, you know, try to get even. Matter of fact, Hebrews says, vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And so part of being a spirit, and I know our flesh wants to do that. Our flesh wants to get on the phone and, and you know, yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. You said that they hurt my, they did this, they did that. And folks, we should not do that. We do not need to be a part of that in what we do. So it says, no evil for evil, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. What is that called? Think about that. Always pursue what is good. That is righteousness. Okay? Do the right thing the first time. Do the right thing because it's the right thing. Do good unto all. Folks, we shouldn't uh, treat non-Christians any different than we do Christians. Okay? We should be kind. We should be gentle. We should be, you know, nice. We should show mercy. All right? So if someone wrongs you, let God handle it. That's the best way I can say it. Now look at verse 16. I love this. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Now this is not talking about if I come home and my house is on fire, I'm not out in the front yard going, whoo yeah. Okay, we're, we need to be a little smarter than that, all right? But again, when you think about it, and I've heard that with all the damage, up, I've heard this saying several times in the last three days, but we lost everything but we have our lives, okay? And so that, that, is, that is what that means. Folks, we can find good, not in everything. I, I don't believe in everything because this world is evil, all right? But we, we need to be, let me put it this way, as Christians, we need to be some of the happiest people on the face of the earth. We need to rejoice. The Bible tells us to rejoice when others are rejoicing. Okay, to be happy when someone else succeeds. And you can find good in most situations if you will look for it. All right, so if we are going to be spirit-filled, we need to rejoice. And do you know when we can rejoice? How about when we sing, when we praise the Lord, when we're together? Folks, I love our music here. I love our spirit-filled music, and, and uh, it just gets your heart ready for the preaching of the Word. So rejoice always. Look at this. Pray without ceasing. Okay? You realize, you know, a lot of times, uh, two things, and two things that I do where I can pray and my eyes are wide open. I can be going from one place to another. Okay? I'm on this side of town, and I'm heading over to Barling for something. Okay, I can pray on the way. When I visit, when we t go on visitation, we pray in my truck before we go, but we can even be praying on the way there. Another place I can pray, uh, and I do this, okay, and I don't do it all the time. I'm not trying to be super spiritual here, but when I'm on my motorcycle, and I'm out there and I'm by myself, and God and the Holy Spirit brings somebody up in my mind, I can stop and, you know, not close my eyes, not get off my bike, but just pray for them. That, that's what it means, pray without ceasing. And truthfully, folks, we need to pray about everything. We need to pray about everything. And then it says, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. Folks, there's this word that has kind of invaded our, you know, not just language, but our lifestyles. And it's called entitlement. Have you, if you've been around people like that, they drive me crazy. Okay? Uh, folks, this is the truth. God owes us nothing. Okay? He created us. All right? He gives everyone a chance to be saved. But yet there are people that think God owes them something, or that society owes them something, or somebody else owes them something. And folks, we need to be thankful for what we had. I like the word in attitude of gratitude, okay? If you woke up today, you have something to thank God about. If you are saved today, you really have something to thank God about. 
So we need to be thankful in everything we do. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I promise you, if you will get a piece of paper, and if you will pray and be spirit-filled, and you put on one side the good things in your life, and the things that are not so good in your life, I, I would say you are going to find so many more good things than you will bad things in your life. There are so, our health, simple things like our eyesight. Folks, there are people that wake up and they can't see anything, nothing, okay? There's people that wake up and they have to have somebody help them with breakfast. There's people that wake up and they have pain from surgeries and maybe missing a limb. Folks, we have so much to be thankful for, and spiritual, uh, uh, spirit-filled folks are very thankful. Number 19, do not quench the Spirit. Folks, we can quench the Spirit with our attitude. Are you coming to church to attend church just to be here? Or do you feel like it's your duty to be here? Folks, we need to come because the Holy Spirit is here, because worship is here, because God is here, because other Christians are here, because the Word of God is here. And I am telling you, I saw it happen in, in a church that I served in, not, not this one, but one earlier. Our parsonage, which uh, I don't, I'll just tell you right now, parsonage is... They're, they're not a good thing. It was right next to the Family Life Center. And I was walking over to church. I'd just go down a little stairs and go over to church. And I get past this couple. And I'm telling you, he was giving her the what for. And all at once, they looked up and they saw me. And then everything changed there. All right? And folks, we can't bring our stuff, okay, you know, what happened this week? When we come to church, we ought to pray every Sunday morning before we come, okay? We can quench the Spirit, all right? If someone's in here and we don't like them or they said something to us, I'm telling you, it can quench the Spirit. And the key, people ask me all the time, I had a guy last week ask me, what is going on at Rye Hill? What are y'all doing there? And I said, it's really simple. We are loving God and we're loving people. That's what we're doing. We're preaching the Word of God and we're worshiping, okay? And, and the Holy Spirit, it can be quenched. And uh, we as Christians, I know we don't mean to. I know you don't get up on a Sunday morning and think, well, I'm just going to quench the Spirit today. But sometimes we bring those burdens and we bring that family issue. Or we bring these things in with us and it quenches the Spirit. I can tell you what's happening. It is the Holy Spirit in our place. That's what's happening. That's why the baptismal waters are moving. That's why we are growing because the Holy Spirit is moving. 20, do not despise prophecies. What is that, folks? That's the preaching of the Word. What are we doing? We as preachers, we're trying to preach truth. We want to preach truth. And when, we, when the Word corrects us, we need to say, I hear and I obey. You know, uh, you know don't, don't get on the preacher when he is preaching straight through uh, God's uh, Word there. And then number 21... Test all things. We're talking about being spirit-filled. We need to test. And I can listen. I kid you not. I can listen to somebody on the TV, whether it's a Sunday or a Saturday or it's a podcast or what. I can listen to them for five minutes and tell in my spirit whether I need to be listened to. If my spirit doesn't bear witness with that spirit, then I don't listen. If while I'm listening, they say something that is contrary to the Word of God, I, I change the channel. I, I change it. We need to test the spirits uh, to know uh, what we need to be listening to. 
then this is basically my life verse. I've said this many times. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, folks, if you are a Christian, you know good from bad. You know evil and what's not evil. And what we have to understand is it doesn't matter where the world says it's all right or not. If the Bible says it's not right, if the Bible says it's a sin, it's a sin. And the world is just throwing all these things at us. They use in this word and this phrase that I do not like. It's called the new normal. Folks, this Bible will do me. The way I was brought up, I was talking, can't think or remember who, I was having lunch with somebody just recently, and they said to me, do you, did you ever think what is going on in our world now would be going on? When I was raised, I'm just telling you folks, when I was raised, it wasn't that way. You didn't say that. You didn't do that in front of the whole world. You didn't get online and, you know, whatever, rant and rave and just say these crazy stuff, okay? So if it's evil, stay away. Doesn't matter if somebody else is doing it. My dad used to always say, somebody going to jump off a cliff? Are you going to jump off a cliff? And, I, you know, at the time I thought that was kind of dumb, but he was really, the, it's the truth, folks. We as Christians need to be spirit-filled and avoid all evil. Now here, verse 23, and then we're through. Uh, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Folks, sanctification, all right, is that point from salvation on that you are trying to live for Jesus Christ. You have been sanctified. You have been set apart. And I'm not always going to say the right thing. I'm not always going to do the right thing. I'm not always going to have a good attitude. But folks, when we mess up, we, if you want to be spirit-filled, we have to confess it to God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that's why I say, and I end with this, I'm going to say this to the day I die, when you lay down, I believe that's one of the most important prayers. I, I think the most important prayer is a prayer of salvation for somebody. You praying for somebody to be saved. You're already a Christian, but that is important. But being sanctified, walking with God. Am I right with God? Am I right with my family? And am I right with my fellow man? Folks, I believe that if we will be right with these three things, we can live a spirit-filled life. I heard Sonny Holland say this, and I've never forgotten. You can't offend a spirit-filled person. He was an evangelist, saying, and the craziest thing, I got to tell this, I, we went to Nicaragua with the church, and we were in the airport, in Sonny Holland, we're walking through with, with our mission team, and I hear a guy in the airport, Mike Franklin, Mike Franklin. And I'm telling you, that was one of the funniest. Everybody went, you got to be kidding me. He knows somebody in Nicaragua. Well, he was on a mission trip, and he was doing the same thing that we were doing. But I want to say it again. You cannot offend a spirit-filled Christian. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for the Holy Spirit. God, thank you that, Lord, uh, we need to be spirit-filled. God, people are looking at us. They are watching us. They are listening to us. They are, they are seeing our attitude and seeing our outlook and seeing our actions. And God, I know we're not perfect. We know we're not. But God, we need to be spirit-filled Christians. And Lord, uh, I truly believe Satan hits us in those areas of weakness. Things that, that really bother us, things that hurt us, things uh, you know, that we are struggling with. And God, I pray that we would just be so full of Jesus that no matter what anybody says or does, we are going to do the right thing and we're going to say the right thing. God, attitude is everything. 
It is everything. And God, if we are going to have the peace of God on our lives, then we need to be Spirit-filled. God, I pray and I challenge all of us, challenge all of us to be Spirit-filled Christians. And God, I do believe we can make a difference in this world. God, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for our Bible study time. And thank you so much for God the Father who created us, Jesus the Son who saved us, and the Holy Spirit that indwells us. God, I pray we would listen to the Holy Spirit and do what's right. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.